All righty, it is noon. Welcome everyone. My name is Annie Pocklington and I am excited to be with you today for another virtual campus visit. I work for the Washington Student Achievement Council, which oversees the Washington State Gear Up Grant at your school. Today, Carmen Green is here with us to talk about Whatcom Community College, and she's also brought her friend and coworker, Elizabeth. So thank you both for being here. Thank Before you. we dive in today, um, I'm just gonna go over a few quick housekeeping needs. So if you haven't already, please turn off your camera and keep it off while our guests are with us. Uh, we also need you to change your name. So use your first and last name as well as your high school name so that we know who you are and where you're coming from and we can take attendance after this visit today. If you're unable to rename yourself, don't stress about it for too long. Just go ahead and drop your full name in high school into the chat and I will make sure to write down that information. You are muted for recording purposes. So if you do have a question today, go ahead and write that in the chat and um, I'll be reading them to our guests at the end of the presentation. If we don't get to your question or something comes up after this session, we really wanna encourage you to reach out to one of our guests or to myself so that we can assist you in getting the information that you need. Alrighty, so this virtual visit series, as you now well know, is set up for you to compare and contrast institutions based on your own personal needs. So all of our institutions are really great, but they do provide different things for different students. So make sure you're thinking about what you'd like to study, what you want your daily life to look like, what housing options you need, and if you'd consider getting a job on or around campus. The awesome thing about Whatcom Community College is that it's a community college and we haven't seen one yet. So we're really excited for our guests to be here today and talk a little more about what life is like when you're a community college student. Make sure that you're also considering cost, uh, financial aid opportunities, and anything else that's important to becoming your best self while attending college. So as you know, uh, personal reflection is of utmost importance when you're figuring out where you want to go to school. So make sure that you're uh, taking notes today. You can find a guided reflection activity on our website, so gearup.wa.gov. You can also explore all of the institutions across the state by checking out this interactive map by WACAN. I'll drop both of these links into the chat once I pass things off to our guests. But first, a big picture overview of Whatcom Community College so you can begin situating yourself in your reflection today. So Whatcom Community College is located in Bellingham, Washington, way up there in the north corner. It's about an hour and a half from Seattle and about five and a half hours from Spokane. Like I said earlier, we're excited to have Whatcom here today because it is a community college. And it's a mid-sized school with just under 5,000 students enrolled. So now that you know the basics, I'm gonna pass it off to our guests, our Whatcom Community College experts. Thanks, Annie. I love that you do a little like preview. That's super helpful to frame everything, especially um, since I know many of you aren't from necessarily the Bellingham area. So that was awesome. Um, and I also love how you framed us as a community college because that is a really unique type of college institution. And we'll get into that um, in more depth as I present. And um, again, I love that Annie introduced Elizabeth as my friend and colleague, because it is true. We are friends and colleagues. So um, Elizabeth, do you want to say hi? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Elizabeth. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the outreach coordinator for Whatcom Community College. Um, and I'm Carmen, and I am the Associate Director for Outreach at Whatcom Community College. So really, um, Elizabeth and I's role at the college is to share with prospective students about the community college, everything it has to offer. And then when you are ready to be applying to colleges and getting started, we're here to support you through that. So I know that for um, the participants in this call, there's kind of a range of age groups. So um, if you are in the ninth or the 10th grade, it's a great time to be exploring different options. If you are in this space and you're an 11th grader, um, especially if you're a 12th grader and you're really um, planning for college for next year, definitely reach out to us. I put our um, contacts in the chat and especially for the 12th graders out there, please do not hesitate to reach out. Um, and, and with you, we'll get a little bit more in depth about the details of truly getting started. So here's us, your outreach team. Um, we are super happy to be here and to talk with you. 
Um, in a, I know that you all have some great like ground rules around the presentations, but if you wanted to um, share in the chat, um, your name, I guess not, maybe not as relevant since we can see your names on the squares, um, but maybe let's see like a dream um, college major or a, a job or a career that you're interested in if you want to share that in the chat. And I know sometimes people um, come to Whatcom first because they don't necessarily know um, what their pathway is going to look like to um, through higher ed and um, finalizing. But um, if you have some ideas, um, just feel free to pop those in the chat. Um, if you have um, questions about what we offer, we'll get to that um, towards the, the slideshow. And I know we have limited time, so I'll just keep on presenting. And if folks want to use the chat, you're welcome to. Okay, I'll skip over that. So as you know, right now we are online, but since hopefully, fingers crossed, knock on wood, when you all come to college, that won't be the case. So we're going to skip right over that. Um, this is an important slide we like to point out to students. Because you're in this space, I believe that you already know this, right? That education is so valuable. Um, this chart just shows, you know, how as your education grows, um, your earnings grow as well, and your opportunity for being unemployed drops. So there's so many amazing reasons to, to further your education, um, to, to, to build on your leadership skills, your critical thinking skills, but there's also some really practical, like financial lifestyle reasons as well. And then why Whatcom? So these are some of the reasons that we always share with students. So really reasonable tuition, um, nice and small class sizes, amazing staff and faculty um, that really make for an amazing learning community. And then I think for you all, the thing that would really set us apart amidst all the other colleges you're hearing from is this idea of academic variety. Um, so basically whatever you are looking to study for the most part, you can begin your journey at Whatcom. So just kind of a preview and we'll get into each of these in more detail. Yeah, and I'm sure that you all um, are somewhat aware of this, but like the first two years, um, the reason why Carmen said that um, no matter what uh, pathway you choose, um, the first two years are typically your prereqs, whether you go to a uh, four-year university, public or private, or, um, or whether you come to Whatcom first. Exactly. Um, and then just to, to get an idea of that, one of the first bullet points on the previous slide, um, our tuition um, rates are uh, much more reasonable than other institutions um, because we are a community college. Um, 4,300 is before your any scholarships or financial aid might kick in. Um, and then that'll um, substantially lessen um, the more scholarships or grants or um, financial aid that you might have. So 4,300 for Whatcom, and then it goes up um, for, for colleges or universities that are um, more like Western Washington University, um, which is um, in Bellingham as well. And then private universities like um, Gonzaga or um, Harvard is probably closer to the 60,000 or higher mark. But um, yeah, just to get a comparison of financial situations. Mm -hmm. And just to give you just a few other examples of public universities that maybe you're familiar with are like the University of Washington, like the Huskies, Wazoo, the Cougs. Um, a lot of those public universities are going to be around $10,000 to $12,000 a year for tuition. So just to kind of get a sense um, of the cost associated. And then while we do have around 5,000 students enrolled at a time, each year we serve around 11,000 students. So for a community college, we are fairly well established. Um, we serve the majority of our students come directly from Whatcom County. That's one of the factors of a community college is we truly do try to serve our community. But we do also have a good chunk of students coming from other areas as well. Um, many of our students are the first in their family to go to college or a first generation college student, which is something we really celebrate. Um, and about 35% of our students identify as being students of color. And about 1,000, that's a funny number to read, 1,111 Running Start students as of last year. So if you're not familiar with Running Start, it's the program where you can earn college credit during your junior and senior year of high school while being enrolled at a college. Um, 
and you get to simultaneously earn those college credits while working towards high school graduation. So this is just a little bit of a breakdown of the students we serve. In that little pie chart, you'll see that most of our students are working on an academic transfer degree, which we'll get into in a minute here. And then a smaller portion are working on a professional technical degree. And Carmen, could you go back to the previous slide? Sure. Um, the, so just to add to the who is Whatcom, Carmen and I are both um, first generation college goers and um, we are we both actually graduated from Whatcom, which is super cool. Um, and we have a number of uh, people working for Whatcom who also were graduates of Whatcom. So it gets um, it's really cool to see that there are people who who go through Whatcom and are successful and then come to work for Whatcom as well. Yeah, yeah, I love that. It, it definitely is like a an amazing like heart of the community where people return. So this slide also speaks to what I mentioned earlier about the variety of academic options. So um, we do offer transfer degrees, professional technical degrees and certificates, as well as bachelor degrees. So a bachelor degree is like that complete college graduate degree that you usually think of associated with a university that usually takes around four years or so. And Whatcom actually offers two of those. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit more about our transfer degrees and prof tech degrees. So um, the difference between the two, a prof tech degree is really something where the student is getting super hands on technical skills. So for example, if you think of like massage therapy, right, you really have to get in there and, and learn how to physically do this task and gain these skills. Um, hospitality tourism management really just kind of getting into the nuts and bolts of what that work looks like visual communications, truly learning how to create flyers and posters and graphic design. So these programs that you see on the right um, typically take about two years for a full-time student. And after that time, the graduate can go right into a job. So it's a pretty direct way after high school to gain some awesome skills and start earning money. A transfer degree takes around two years, so same-ish amount of time. But once a student finishes their transfer degree, they would apply then to a university. So again, UW, Western, Wazoo, Central, Eastern. And then at that institution, they would spend about two more years to then graduate with their complete four year bachelor degree. Yeah. And, go ahead. And the transfer degree, uh, depend, it, it'll depend on which, which the one that you assign, that you sign up for it will depend on what your goals are after you complete those two years at Whatcom Community College. So if you're looking um, more to completing your prereqs, you'd get more like a direct transfer um, associate degree. And that's the first one listed above. Um, if, it, if it's more focused on like uh, literal science um, stuff, so like bioengineering or chemical engineering or th things more um, STEM related, um, you're looking more at like an associates in science. So that's kind of like a little bit of a difference between all of these. And then the business one focused more in getting you set up for a business bachelor's degree once you're done at Whatcom. Exactly. And what's really important to know about Whatcom and all community colleges is that they really are a part of the same pathway as students who go straight off to a four year university like UW, like Western. Um, what I always tell students is it's really a parallel path. It's not a different path. Um, what's really neat to know, so for folks like Elizabeth and I, we both went to Whatcom, we transferred to Western, and we are both graduates of Western Washington University. Our diploma from Western looks exactly the same as a student who went there for all four years. The only difference is that we were able to do our first two years of the same classes but at Whatcom for a much more affordable price. So hopefully that's kind of exciting to you to know like I can still achieve like my goal if my goal is to graduate from Wazoo, for example, but there are different pathways to do that. And then these are the two bachelor degrees we do offer. So if you are really interested in business or in like IT networking and cybersecurity, which is a really quickly growing field, um, those are bachelor degrees that you could complete in their entirety at Whatcom. I'll skip over that one. So, um, so student services, these are some of the kind of like 
cool opportunities you have as a student to be supported while at college. You'll find a lot of these services at most any college you attend, but we just want to make sure you know they exist. Um, there's so much to look forward to as a college student. Um, we have like amazing tutoring services, um, personal counseling for free, um, an intercultural center where students talk about um, identity and activism, leadership. Um, so there's just so many different areas where, where our students can feel supported. Yeah, and then between this slide and the next, um, the student services, you can think of more of like the people and the buildings that you might go into for um, different supports um, and services. And then the next one is more of like an experience. Mm -hmm. Exactly, super well put. So we have all kinds of fun things you can be involved in as a student. We have clubs, um, the image you see here of this cool like kind of oval shaped building, that's our recreation center that you have access to as a student. We do have collegiate sports teams, so you can be like a collegiate level athlete at Whatcom. We also have intramural sports, we're just, which are kind of just like a fun way to play recreationally with your friends, not super competitively. We have student government, a student newspaper, um, and we actually now have residence life. So we opened our first dorm on campus this fall, which you'll see in just a couple of slides. These are some of the athletic teams we have. So if you are a star soccer player, basketball player, volleyball player, um, we have we offer those options. Um, and I think sometimes students forget that being a collegiate athlete could also be a way to fund your education. Our um, varsity athletes can have up to 65% of their tuition covered by athletic scholarship. And we also recently added um, cross country teams. So lots of different options. And then I like to throw this up here too, especially now that we're, you know, doing remote services. Um, these are just a, a handful of some of our Whatcom like Instagram accounts. Um, I don't know these days if 10th graders are on Instagram. I feel like TikTok's the new cool thing. But if you are interested in kind of just getting a sense of like some of the activities and like the culture of Whatcom, these are kind of fun to explore. The outreach account is the one that Lisbeth and I run. And that's a great account to follow for like going to college tips and tricks and different enrollment steps and things like that. So if you want to take a picture of this slide or anything like that, or I can pop it up later during questions. Yeah, and then a, a lot of these uh, different um, accounts also uh, advertise or show different events going on on campus that are that aren't just for students of Whatcom Community College but they're like more open to the community and um, you can get a feel for what it's like to actually be at Whatcom as a student. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is one of our new buildings that opened this fall. Since you can't like physically visit campus we wanted to include some photos so this is a great space um, it just has a lot of collaborative learning spaces. There's actually rooftop seating, which is really cool. So if you can kind of see the guardrail up there, it looks like an, an outdoor like rooftop restaurant or something. And it's, it's really neat. And there's, there's a maker space with different like printing tools, um, sewing machines, like just different ways for our students to be creative. Um, it's open now and yet now we're, our campus is closed for COVID, but by the time you all come to campus, it'll be a space you get to use. And then Cedar Hall. So this is one of the really exciting additions to campus. So um, this is a, a dorm building. So if you did want to live on campus, it's not required at Whatcom. Um, I'll just say that. So if you'd prefer to rent a house with some friends or um, live at home, many of our students do that. But if you did want the experience of living in a dorm hall, with a roommate or three roommates, um, we do offer that as well. So it's a beautiful building. Um, these are some shots of the inside. So some cool like common areas. The ground floor has this really great fireplace and like shared kitchen. So you can have like dinners and make cookies together and all of that good stuff. And then the next piece of our presentation is really about how to get started. And I know for most of you, that's not for a couple of years into the future. So um, I'll just say that if when you are ready to be applying to Whatcom and getting started, don't hesitate to reach out to Elizabeth and I, and then explore the website. So um, the Virtual Welcome Center is a web page we have that really captures all of the elements of getting started at the college. 
We also have a page that's specific for high school students and high school counselors that just has all kinds of different resources. Um, so definitely explore the website um, if you're interested in that. And then um, Annie, we could talk for longer if we have longer, but I just wanted to be mindful of the time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it doesn't look like we have too many questions into the chat. So if you do want to maybe give us a little bit of an overview of the admissions process, just for any seniors that are here. Yeah. And then maybe we do that for a few more minutes. And then I'll just invite students that are here today to drop your questions in the chat because Carmen and Elizabeth are totally here to field them and want to give you that information. So I'll be monitoring that. Okay, perfect. Um, so what I'll do, I'll, I'll actually just jump over to the website. Um, and let me know, Elizabeth, will you let me know if you can still see this? Yes, we still can see it. Okay, perfect. So since everything is virtual right now, I feel like it's helpful to just see the steps where they live on the website. So I'll start actually from the home page. So when you visit our home page, you are a future student. So you would go ahead and visit this square. This is the virtual welcome center. So this is um, a space on the website where you can um, explore your funding options, explore our different degrees and certificates. Um, you'll see a lot of our different service areas listed here for you to connect with if you need, for example, to set up access and disability services. If you happen to be a student with like an IEP or a 504 plan in high school. But where I'll focus on today is our general application and enrollment process. So this page is really where you want to continue to revisit throughout your senior year and throughout your application process. So um, step one, of course, is to apply. And once you do that, you should hear back from the college in around five to seven business days. And from that point, once you have your admissions email um, and your student ID number is when you can really tackle the next steps. So setting up your student network account, um, finding your academic starting point via placement, meeting with your academic advisor. So all of these things are kind of laid out for you to navigate. And throughout this entire process, if you hit like an obstacle or a stopping point, Elizabeth and I are your go-to people to kind of walk you through whichever those are. Yeah, and I mean, we're continuously working on making this process way more um, uh, easy to go through. Um, but if there's ever any questions you get caught up on one on a particular spot, feel free to always reach out um, to our outreach um, email or to our personal emails. Um, we will see either one of those. Um, but yeah, there are parts of this where um, before I was, uh, when I was a student, as a, a senior going through, I was like, what, what do I do next? I don't know what's next or and it, it can get really complicated, especially if you don't have someone who, um, who knows the process already. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice, oh, sorry, Annie, did you have a? Oh, no, go ahead and finish up. I'm here when you're ready. Okay. Um, I would just wanted to point out too, you'll see how um, funding options and applying for financial aid we put right at the top. And that's because you can really start working on that before you even think about which colleges you're applying for. Um, so during your senior year, and if any of you are seniors in this space, you want to start thinking about financial aid for your for the following year, your first year of college, actually in October. So um, if you are a, even a junior or senior and ex you're exploring that, um, definitely make sure that financial aid is at the top of your list. Um, and if there are any seniors in this space, we actually have an event coming up on November 12th that provides some really helpful support on the, um, the applications for financial aid. So don't hesitate to register for that if you'd like. And then one last page I'll just show you really quick is our high school students and counselor page. There's Elizabeth and I. Um, and this page has some really great resources. And even if you're not um, a senior, if you're not in the class of 2021, um, like this college dictionary is a really neat tool um, there's so many strange terms in college, right, from like application to registration, syllabus, um, you know, uh, tuition deadlines, blue slips, wait lists, like it's a whole different language. So we tried to kind of demystify some of those terms there. Awesome. I love that piece, especially. I also just want to mention, thank you, Carmen, for bringing up the financial aid night. Um, just if there are any seniors on the call, 
Just a reminder that submitting a financial aid application does not commit you to any money at all. It's not, you're not paying anything for it. You're not saying you're going to go to college. You're not having to specify where exactly or that you've been admitted anywhere. So just know that it's the first step of a longer process um, and it doesn't commit you to anything. So if you go to Whatcom's financial aid event, they really just wanna help and support you fill out that application. They're not expecting anything from you on the flip side. So just a heads up there. Um, so thank you for that, Carmen. That's really helpful. And we do, it looks like we have two questions. Perfect. Let me try to scooch my stuff over. At this point, would it be helpful for me to just stop sharing my screen? Up to you. I think either way is fine. Let me jump back to the oops, presentation. And I think it might also depend on what the questions are. Yeah. So the first question is if you have any robotics classes or options. Oh, that is a great question. Um, off the top of my head, we have, we have our programs that prepare students for an engineering degree. So within that two year kind of general university requirement chunk of classes, if you're preparing for like engineering robotics, you would take a handful of kind of entry level engineering type classes. And then you would really kind of dig into the meat of that um, subject area once you transfer to a university. But we do have some really great engineering classes. Um, one of my favorite instructors at Whatcom's name is Pat Burnett. He's hilarious. He has like a long wizard beard and he loves like robotics and like He's always making, he made like a little um, arcade game thing like this big for his students. And they're always building all kinds of neat projects and stuff. So um, there are elements of it, but the meat of that stuff will really happen in your last two years of university. And we also have some great like student run engineering clubs. Yeah. And so I think that within those student clubs, they kind of dig into some robotic stuff. And if, if you're the type of person that's interested in becoming like a leader and also um, having fun with like robotics and you wanna start a robotics club, we also have funds for, for getting started um, with a robotics club. So, so there's always that option. Awesome, very cool. That's a great, that's a great suggestion. And then another question was, I know you, I know you showcased the tuition price and um, it was around 4,000 or something a year. What about staying on campus? Like if a student was gonna stay in the dorm, what would the cost of tuition and housing be? That's a really good question. So I'll just be really transparent because I think honesty is key when you're trying to make decisions about college. The cost of living on campus is pretty steep. Yeah. So um, for example, I believe a, a quarter, I'm trying to think of the best way to frame the price. So I think in a, for a month, a student living in one of our units is paying around a thousand dollars a month and it's it's pretty pricey and so if you're a student if you get a great financial aid award for like that includes some housing um, or if it's something you know you've been planning on or saving for um, it could be a great option when i was in college i rented a, a cute little house in downtown bellingham with four friends my rent was 330 dollars a month for my room um, and I know a lot of friends who also lived at home. So there's a huge range of options. It doesn't have to be as expensive as $1,000 a month. With that, I'll say, if you're a person who was like, you know, I really want to go to, um, let's say, like UW, right? But instead, I'm going to be a little bit more financially um, reserved and go to Whatcom Community College. Maybe you have some leftover wiggle room to then splurge a little bit on on-campus housing because you're saving over $5,000 on the tuition piece. So there's so many different ways to think about it. Um, I will say living on campus is not like the most economical approach to campus, but it can be such a great experience. And if that's, if that's something that's really valuable to you, then it could be really awesome. Awesome, thank you for that. I think the other thing that maybe students do or don't know is that a lot of um, four-year colleges or universities do require you to live on campus your freshman year. So oftentimes, the reason that folks are choosing community colleges because maybe they wanna live at home and go to college, or maybe they do wanna save costs on housing and um, find a way to live with friends or something like that. So I'm glad that someone asked that question because it's definitely one of the biggest considerations around community colleges, kind of that living flexibility and the cost flexibility as well. 
Absolutely. Yeah, that's an excellent question. All right. Well, I think that is all the questions we have. Do you have anything more for us, Carmen or Elizabeth? I just want to encourage if there are any seniors in the space, please do reach out to us. Um, I put our contact. Um, it's right at the top of the chat. Just outreach at whatcom.edu or you can reach our personal inboxes. But the secret's out. We're also the people checking the outreach inbox. So it's us no matter what. Um, and it's been really nice to talk with you all. I wish we could see you in person, but we're just really grateful to be able to share some information with you um, and hopefully get some ideas going for you for what you want to do after high school. Um, and if it's a little bit intimidating to reach out to us, um, I would recommend finding a buddy um, to send out an email with. Um, and that way we could maybe set up a meeting time where we can um, all meet as a group instead of yeah. just one-on-one. -on -one. But also we're not scary, we promise. Yes. <laughs> I love that tip. That's an awesome tip. Sometimes asking for help or going with a partner is just what we all need. So um, thank you to both Carmen and Elizabeth and Whatcom Community College for all of your time and information. And thanks to all of you for being here as guests today. You can find a list of our future college visits as well as previously recorded visits on our Gear Up website. Otherwise, we will see you all next time. So thank you again so much. Thanks, Annie. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.